and say, Akauna, whoever, IC number, has been arrested at this time, uh, he'll be here until whatever time, in order for you to first interview and then later to remand. Huge fundamental change. Has it resulted in a huge spike in crime rates in the last two weeks? Or one week rather? No. One. Two, we've seen changes to our, of course, uh, the bar uh, has criticized the Peaceful Assembly uh, Act. Have we seen daily demonstrations in the streets? No. So, what does this say? This says, and I always make this point about Malaysians, we are very peaceful people. We just want to carry on with our business. We just want to make sure that nobody is harmed in our country. That's what it's all about. Even if you do think 377A, 377B, do you think the, the city siders will have the day Mardi Gras in Kuala Lumpur the next day? No. Why? Because this whole issue of sexual orientation is a private business matter in Malaysia. <laughs> I don't see as we see it. Because the experience in other countries tells us, like say Netherlands for instance, we allow or they allow, the government allows civil partnership. What do you think will be next? What has been fought for in Netherlands? Same sex marriage. The fight will never end if we follow the last of human being. If we don't put the touch stone, if we don't have a touch stone, we'll follow the human wishes, whim and fancy. Somehow, my worry is that we open rooms for us in analogy to have drunkard as bus driver as taxi driver, to have kidnappers and rapists as a superintendent to the playground. That is my worry. We open rooms for this group to move further and on the ticket of personal liberty that it will be the next process or agenda. We have seen many examples throughout the world in the globe and we have seen papers presented the United Nations adults and boy relationship. This is what I'm worried for the nation. This is what I'm worried not only for the religion but for this civilization. We have to have a touchstone in this civilization. The touchstone is morality. Are we ready to respect the criminal? I don't think so. Are we ready to have teachers who ungodly who have ungodly attitude? This worries me so much. It's not about Islam. It's about all religious human beings, all religious Malaysians, all peaceful. <laughs> this is a, what we want is peace. So it will not sound to have peace if the majority are not happy. We have only peace, we will only achieve peace when majority are happy. What benefit the nation will have? Probably economists may answer. If we supply something, or we sell something, or we sacrifice something, we want something back. That's the very nature of human being. You cannot deny. If you sacrifice 377, what will we get? Liberty of human being. But what the nation will benefit? What the nation will be that benefit? Personal freedom. How long this personal freedom will stay? <laughs> so, let's think as we ask, as we request a thing. <laughs> let's think. I think I have to disagree with your ideas. 
I have to say that uh, I want to reiterate what I said earlier on. 377A and 377B is an archaic law and it should be repealed. It should be repealed because it does not serve any purpose at all. 377 doesn't serve any purpose except as a political instrument to persecute a political opponent. And because of that, it doesn't do anything to our society. Right? That's all. That's what I want to say. Thank you, Dr. Farouk, Kashan, and Mr. Lim. So, I believe that at least some of us has already, you know, have a certain understanding and some kind of picture of what is actually the discussion is all about. So, now I, I open the floor for any questions to be asked. Can I see raise of hand? How many questions? How many of you, of you intend to ask question? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'll, I'll just stop it. Okay, proceed to the mic, please. Uh, there's a mic there. Uh, sorry, before that I need to remind you that this is not an Islamic forum, Islamic discussion. This is an academic forum the discussing legal and civil issues. I believe that every one of us know about this, right? Please. Thank you. I give my homestead. I will call it. That's my name. Regarding the issue, please. I want to comment, say comment, on the issue whether a state can interfere in personal matters, in private matters. Yeah. In human rights discourse, human rights is classified into two categories. We have what we call positive rights and the negative rights. The positive rights or the negative rights, those are the rights upon which the state cannot interfere. That is the private individual's right, otherwise called individual's right. A good example is the right to life, so to state. Then the positive rights, those are the rights that require state interference. But in the true sense, and in the actual sense, whether a right is positive or is negative, it requires a minimum degree of state interference. When you say you have the right to life, the state cannot protect that right to life without putting in place certain mechanisms. For example, police. If you say you have the right to life, then you must not terminate other people's right for you to protect your own right to life. So where I'm going, my own point is, a state has the right at any point or the power at any point in time to interfere and regulate private affairs, be it positive rights or negative rights. That is my first point of view. At that point, I maintain that the state has the right to interfere in private affairs, to regulate the activities within its jurisdiction. Then secondly, in human rights discourse as well, we are looking at human rights from only one perspective. In human rights discourse, there are two school, major schools of thought. We have the universalist school and the cultural relative school. I belong to the school of cultural relativists. The cultural relativist school believe that when we talk of human rights, human rights is not what is contained in international documents. It's not what you see in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights or the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. But human rights is determined or based also on the local cultural tradition of the people. And when we say culture here, I want to include, you say Islam also, quote unquote, because Islam has its own culture. So when you know what is determine what is right, or what is a crime, or what is right or wrong, then you must bear in mind the structure upon which a society is built. And that is where my question lies. What is the structure upon which Malaysia is built? But what will determine whether homosexuality is right, or whether homosexuality is wrong? I believe that's the question for everybody to answer. Then the next one I want to make reference to is the issue of civilization. 
We tend to misperceive civilization with technological advancement. Civilization is different from technological advancement. Every society is civilized based on its own cultural values. The mere fact that a particular art has been allowed in UK or in US does not mean it should be permitted in Malaysia. Does not mean it should be permitted in my country, Nigeria. It all depends upon which structure the society is built. So thank you. Uh, before any one of you ask the question, perhaps you can specify uh, the panelists that you, you, you address the issue, the, the question, which panelists you are actually addressing the question, and where you are coming from, and what is your name. <coughs> Next question. My name is Muhammad Husni, I'm from... Uh, 